Hi, I'm Stephen Colbert on the Stephen Colbert Report. Tonight we welcome Robert E. Lee from the Civil War era. Let's bring him on down. Hello, nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you too. Let's talk. So General Lee, what was your early life like? Well, I was born in Stratford, Virginia on January 19th, 1807. I was the fourth child of Colonel Henry Lee and oh, Ann Hill Carter. Oh, your father was a colonel. Yes, he was. Mm. My family was not very wealthy, despite our position in the ruling elite of Virginia. I did not have enough money to go to college. So, I entered the United States Military Academy at West Point and graduated in 1829, after moving up higher and higher in the ranks. Fascinating. So, General Lee, what made you the kind of person you are today? Well, since I was a good soldier in the Mexican-American War from 1846 to 1848, I had a very high reputation. I then resigned from the U.S. Army and took command of the Confederate forces in Virginia. After that, I was put in charge of putting an end to John Brown's slave insurrection at Harper's Ferry. Once I stopped that, I was named a full general and the new leader of the Confederate States Army. After the war ended, I became president at Washington College. Just mind-boggling. What kind of effect did you have on the United States? Well, I had a major effect on the Civil War. I was a major general for the Union, then I resigned when the Civil War broke out. Then, during the war, I joined the Confederate States and fought for Virginia. As a general, I won many battles and only losing in Gettysburg. I tried to convince the people of the South to work to restore peace in the country. I was said not to be just a great influence for the South, but for the North, too. My army and I were also the reason that, that the Civil War lasted for so long. So what are you famous for? Well, I'm very famous for being a general for the Confederate States and a soldier in the Union. I declined the offer to be a general for the Union because I couldn't stand fighting against my own state. So I took the offer to be a general for the Confederates instead. My wife is also a great-granddaughter of George Washington. On my plantation is where the Arlington National Cemetery is today. On this 1,100 acres of land is where many of the Union soldiers were buried. I'll have to go to the cemetery sometime. Yeah, it's a very, very nice place to go. Now, this may be a bit of an awkward question, but what were the circumstances of your death? What was your late life like? Well, I died of pneumonia at age 63 in 1870 in Lexington, Virginia. After I surrounded at the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse and on April 9th, I went home and became a president at a small university. I spent the rest of my life in Virginia. Then, while I was on a family vacation, I, stu I suffered a stroke. I then suffered from pneumonia for, and for the rest of my life and died on the campus I worked at. That's just too bad. So tell me about your family life. First, I'll start with my parents. My parents are Anne Hill Carter Lee and Henry Lee III. My father was colonel for the U.S. Army in the Revolutionary War. Later in his life, he got involved in some financial trouble. He spent some time in jail. After he got out, he fled to the West Indies. As for my wife, Mary Ann Acustis Lee, she was with me until the day I died. My children are Robert E. Lee Jr., George Washington Custis Lee, William Henry Fitzhugh Lee, Anne Carter Lee, Mildred Child Lee, Eleanor Agnes Lee, and Mary Custis Lee. I only had one sibling growing up, and that was my sister, Sydney Smith Lee. Sounds like you had a lot of children. I did, yes. What are some of your famous quotes? I have lots of famous and known quotes. In the last moments of my life, I said, strike the tent, and it seemed that I was giving order to my troops. In one of my quotes, I stated, I have been up to see the Congress, and they do not seem to be able to do anything except eat peanuts and chew tobacco while my army is starving. I said this to express my anger about how the Congress did nothing to keep my soldiers from starving to death and caring about their lives. When I said, I cannot trust a man to control others who cannot control himself, I was truly expressing my anger to one of my generals who could not make decisions on the war, let alone decisions on himself. Another one of my quotes, get correct views and learn to see the world in its true light. It will enable you to live presently, to do good, and when summoned away, to leave without regret. That was one of my most inspiring quotes, saying to never live life with regret, else it will come back to haunt you. Do your duty in all things. You cannot do more. You should never wish to do less. I said this to reinsure my shoulders that if you do your own duty, you got the job done. Very good. What are some important battles you were in? My first battle was, a, was the battle at Gaines Mill, where I saved 314 acres of Confederate land, which means that my army and I saved that land from getting captured by the Union. I also fought at Malvern Hill, Fredericksburg, Gettysburg, and Petersburg. And all those battles have saved a total of 2,867 acres of Confederate land. The greatest battle I ever fought in was at Gettysburg. Even though I had to surrender and got most of my troops killed, it was a good, hard-fought battle. Sounds like a great battle. It was. 
Well, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's been, it's been great. A, it's been a great time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you thank for coming. You. See you Have again. See you again sometime.